It's a stark reality. Every six days in Canada, a woman is killed by her intimate partner. This year alone, in this province alone, 12 women died in alleged domestic violence crimes. And what's worse, most of the time, it comes as no surprise. It's a very personal risk. It's not random. He's, you know, you're the target. This woman asked us to obscure her identity. She's still afraid of her former partner. It's terrifying. Um, it's every minute of every day, day and night, you're wondering if he's coming to hurt you or hurt the kids. The woman's abuser was eventually convicted, but only after years of stalking her. Proposed legislation would make it harder for people like him to be released on bail again. The onus would be on repeat offenders to convince judges to set them free while they await trial. Advocates say it could mean the difference between life and death. Women have been further harassed, assaulted or even killed while their uh, former abusive partners are out on bail. Burns points to the Basil Borutsky case. He was found guilty of murdering three of his former partners in a shocking one-day killing rampage. It's considered one of the worst cases of domestic violence in Canadian history. But the fact Borutsky had been in court for assaulting his victims before he killed them is not unusual. Peter Jaffe is reviewing more than 300 domestic homicide cases in Ontario. In three quarters of the cases, there were warning signs. Stalking, harassment, a history of assault convictions. These homicides don't happen out of the blue. And it's important that the justice system uh, takes domestic violence seriously. When there's warning signs, I think there has to be an increasing onus on what we do to hold the perpetrator accountable and what we do to try to protect victims in those circumstances. If I was making the rules, there would be no bail. For survivors, the sooner the better, before it's too late again. Joanna Rimaliotis, CBC News, Toronto.